Hey everyone, I'm Katrina from Theme Creations Reefs and Things and I am back. I have been gone for a couple of weeks now. I haven't been with you guys to do videos, but you've seen some of my balloon decorations. If you follow me on social media, you've seen some of the things that I have been doing this week. I had a graduation party. I had to uh, decorate at our clubhouse here in my subdivision. Then I also had a vendor show the following Friday. So I have been keeping kind of busy. Um, and then, unfortunately, I wound up getting hurt at work a little bit. So I had to take some time to just let my body rest and recoup from that. Um, so now I'm back. Um, I had a customer order. She wanted uh, some, uh, uh, she had double doors. She wanted patriotic reef. So um, she requested just a deco mesh with a bowl reef. So I actually put this together the other night. Show you guys. And I'm going to do another one today. She wanted one with a red bow. And the one we're going to do today has a blue bow. So this is it. It's a deco mesh, just plain uh, the red, white, and blue stripe deco mesh. Um, and this is on a 12 inch uh, work form because she has a double door, so she don't want it too big. But that's the bow because she wanted it one red and one blue. So we're going to do that together today. Um, this wreath is very, very easy. Very few materials. It shouldn't take too long to do. Matter of fact, the only materials that you you, you want to use is the 21 inch red, white, and blue stripe mesh. And you don't have to use this. You can use whatever color you want. A white, a blue, a red, whatever. A white, the blue with the white stripe, red or with white stripe, whatever. Whatever color you want, you can use this 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 style that I'm gonna show you on any type of reef that you want to do. But today we're gonna do a patriotic. So I went with the red, white, and blue stripe mesh, the 21 inch. And what I did was I cut 12 pieces at 30 inches, okay? 12, 12 pieces at 30 inches. That would make two of these, okay? So, and this is on a 12 inch reform. I had to make two for her. So that would make two of these, okay? So once again, 21 inch mesh, cut 12 pieces at 30 inches, okay? So once we cut cut our our 12 pieces at 30 inches, I put six on that reframe, and we're gonna do the second one on this one. So we're gonna use a 12 inch uh, work form wire form, and this form I got I get from Walmart. This is where I get my 12 inch forms from. I just go to Walmart. I pick up 10, 12, whatever they have. I clean them out half the time and I make sure I have them because these are great for double doors. It makes a great size reef. And then it also makes a great size flower reef. You can go to the 10 inch or you can do a 12 inch depending on how big you want that flower reef. So I really like the 12 inch uh, work forms. They're really, really good. And I get them at uh, Walmart. You're gonna need 12 pipe cleaners or Chanel stems, whatever. You can call them ladies and gentlemen. Pipe cleaners or Chanel stems. You're gonna need 12 of them. And I'm going to show you exactly what to do with them. You also going to need you can make you can make your bow by hand, or you can get, have your easy bow maker, or the bow dabber, or whatever you want. Because we're going to make a bow. Like I showed you, the first reef has a uh, bow that's mainly red. The second one is going to be mainly blue. And these are the two colors that ribbon that we're going to use for that. This is like a blue sequence stripe one that I have here. I don't know if you can see it well, but it's blue with the striped sequence in it. That's going to be in the bow along with this red, white, white with red and blue sequence uh, stripes on it as well. So we're going to, we're going to, that's what we're going to use for the ribbon uh, today. And we're going to use the easy bow maker to do it. So this is what I love using this to make my bow. So you can use the easy bow maker to do it. So we're going to set this aside because we're not at the bow part yet. So this style that we're going to make today, I learned and I love it. So we're going to do it today and you're going to see how easy it is. Easy it is. Oh, when you see it, you're going to be like, wow. It is called the ruffle poof method. Ruffle poof method. Wrap your head around that for a second. But before we get to that, let's put our pipe cleaners on. When you have a 12 inch work form, right? You have a 12 inch work form, you have six of these like joining pieces, right? 
one two three four five six and what you want to do is you're going to put a pipe cleaner at the top these two and the bottom two right so you want to go attach a pipe cleaner to the top rails and then the bottom two rails and we're going to go all the way around and do that so when you come on today say hello let me know who you are let me know who you are let me know where you're checking in from I'm gonna see if I can pull up some comments. Not sure I don't see any coming through right now. But hey, let me know. Let me know oh, who you are, where you're calling from. Uh, if you do any crafts, what kind of crafts you do. You could be a person that does uh, the mugs, you can make t-shirts, paint furniture. It don't matter, let me know what you're into. And if you're into making reefs, what kind of reefs do you make? Do you make the grapevine reefs? Do you just do deco mesh reefs? Do you do the burlap roofs? Let me know. And if you're not a crafter and you want to learn or this is something that you're in, interested in, let me know what you what you want me to make next. What you want to see, what you're interested in learning how to make and maybe I can help you out with that. I love teaching people. That's, I, lo I really get a lot of enjoyment out of making these reefs and why not show somebody else how to do it? So like I said, we're going to put one at the top and one at the bottom where those bars are, where those little connecting bars are for the reefs. I'll show you up close. So here we are. You put at the top, the top two, and then you put at the bottom two. And you go all the way around. Okay? So what did you guys do for Father's Day? I took my husband, me and my husband and my brother-in-law went out and we had a really nice dinner at one of the local restaurants here. It was really, really nice. Um, just something real local and quiet. Uh, we did that. So what did you guys do? Let me know. When you, when you check in, let me know. I don't see any comments yet, so hopefully if you're commenting, it'll, it'll work itself out and I'll be able to see comments in a little bit. But if you're watching me on Facebook, where I'm going live right now, uh, please like, share, follow, definitely comment. Always when you watch my video, please comment. Let me know who you are and where you're checking in from what kind of craft are you into or if you're into any craft or not craft at all you're just interested in learning let me know and like I said if you want to learn how to do something let me know what you're interested in learning how to do and maybe I can help you out all right we on the last one so now we have I, I pushed all the ones on the inside right I laid them on the inside so they added away and then I just stuck the ones on the outside pointing out. And you'll understand why in a minute when I show you the style of reef that we're going to do. It makes it much easier when you do it this way, right? So these are your 12 pipe cleaners, and this is on a 12-inch work form, okay? Reef work form. So just remember that. Now, we're going to get to this style of reef making, which I thought was great. And you, all you're using is one roll of 21-inch mesh. You're making two reefs. One roll of 21 inch mesh, making two reefs. Come on, can't get no better than that, right? So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll it out a little bit. And I actually have my clips there. I use clips, and you're gonna see why I have them here. And I actually put just a little something on the mesh to. Give me a little leverage so you can use anything or use nothing at all it's up to you but you lay your mesh out the long way you see how i have it coming out the long way this is the long way going up and down right so you have it the long way and what you do at this point is you want to come in from the edge five inches so i'm i'm on my mat and i'm going to use i'm going to come over to the 20 inch mark and i'm going to go over to the 15 inch mark so use your mat or get a piece of tape on your table, measure five inches, take that to your table, and you know that's the five inches you need to come in from the edge, this edge, from the outside edge of your mesh. You know you need to come in five inches. What I do to help with the frame with these, uh, these open ends is I tuck it under just a little bit, tuck it under just a little bit, tuck it under a little bit, come over to the 15, and now what's good about this mesh is that it is color on it. So the 15 inches right here with this white and red is. So we want to crunch up straight up this white and red line. So if you're using a mesh, 
that has color and say, you know, you're using pink with purple stripes or white with black stripes or whatever the case may, may be. You go over to the five inch mark on your mesh and then you just find out where it is with that color and you can just follow that color line straight up to make sure your line stays close to even. It don't have to be perfect, ladies and gentlemen. So if you're a little off, it's fine. It will be okay. So once we tuck in the bottom, we start pinching in. And you just pinch in. Just pinch in. That's all you do. Pinch in. That's all you do. Follow that white and red stripe. Now when you get to the other end, you want to tuck that other end under as well, right? A lot of times it's already rolled under, but if it's not, you just roll it under, tuck it in. I take my little clip and I clip it down. Now, sometimes with the mesh, you're going to have to work on getting it all, all in there so it'll stay clipped, but there you go, right? So you got your little bundle at the end with the clip. That's your little five inches on that side. Now, the look that you're going for is what they call a uh, the Christmas candy type look where it's a wrapper, and you see how on the wrappers you have the candy in the middle and you have the twist ends. That's the look that you're going for. So we got one twist in, so we got to make a second twist in on the other side. So we do the same thing we did here. We take the end of the mesh. We tuck in that bottom part of the mesh. We find the five inch mark on our mat, which again on this side is the red and white stripe, right? So you wanna go with the, you wanna follow the red and white stripe all the way up. So like I said, if you have a mesh that has lines on it, follow the lines. Hey Brenda, I see you checking in. Thank you for checking in. Thank you, Leanne. I see you, girl. I see you. All right, so we want to follow that red and white line, that red and white line. So that's what we do. You just work, walk your hands up the line. Keep it going. Like I said, it don't have to be absolutely straight. This is art, ladies and gentlemen. Make it your own. It don't have to be perfect. This is not, I always said, it's not rocket science. Now look at this. Now you got what looks like the candy, right? Look at that. You got two parts. Put my hand here so you can see what I'm talking about. See? Now it looks like that type of candy, that like Christmas candy that you see, right? Because you got an end here and an end here. Let me show you what we're going to do with it. You take this in here, you get your wreath. Now, we're going to go to the top one. One of the top ones, any one of the top ones. I like to start on the top. So you start at the top here. And you put this gathered part into that, that Chanel stem. Push it down. Bring up that Chanel stem. And then you tie it down. Give it a good one, two twist. You got two twists. Now look at that. You got a ruffle. Remember I told you this style is called the ruffle poof method. Right? So we got a ruffle. Let me show you. So we open up the second end right where the other ruffle is right this is the other end this is where the other ruffle is we want to go now down to the next over to the next little section over here to the bottom so you want to go diagonally across right so we went up to the top on this one we want to go to the bottom on the next one so we open up that zip tie and we push this down where we had the little clip. We take the Chanel stem and we give it a good tie. You push it down, give it a good twist. Make sure it's secure. Right? Now look at that. Now we reach in here. You gotta do the poof, right? Because that's what we're doing. We're doing the ruffle poof me method. There you go. There go your ruffle. There go your poof. There go your ruffle. There go your poof. Now, with this, some of your ends will stick out. So I want to show you. All you do is push this down. Take your scissors. Clip it. It's gone. It's gone. You see how pretty that is? That is just gorgeous the way it is. Gorgeous the way it is. Now, let me show you. This is how it's starting. But one up, once I put all six pieces up there, you see how full it's going to look? It's gonna look great look at that so we're gonna start with the next one 
So we went the top, the top on this end. When we first put it down, we put the top on this end. And then we went diagonally. So we went from top to bottom to go over to the next Chanel stem, which is on that next little connecting bar, right? And we attached it there. So now what we want to do is we're going to make another one. Leanne, you said yours would look flat. No, it wouldn't, girl. You just got to try it out. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. You know, you can always come over. I'll show you how, Leanne. I don't have a problem with that. Whenever you feel like coming on over, I can show you how it's done. You said, Brenda, you love it already? Wait, I just, I love this whole style. So once again... We roll it out the long way, right? We're going to take our mesh, we're going to roll it along. We're not going to go this way. We're going to roll it out the long way. We need that finished edge on the end. And we take it to our mat or tape or table or you can wing it. It's up to you. You know how, what five inches look like or just about, then fine. I, I like to kind of use my mat. I pay for it. I'm going to use it, right? So you tuck under that end you want to stop the fraying a little bit we all know I said all the time mesh is going to fray no matter what this is mesh it's going to fray but we want to minimize it as much as we can so we go to that 20 inch we come over to the 15 and once again that's where this red and white stripe is so we want to follow that red and white stripe straight up to the other end that's what we want to do we just gather this up straight up to the other end and if it moves around and it twists on you no big deal, no big deal. Nobody's gonna know that it's not perfect. Nobody's gonna know. Trust me, nobody's gonna know. You take your clip, you get to the end. And like I said, sometimes you have to hold it a little bit because I know once or twice it came loose on me, so you have to just pay attention for a minute. You got some little frays, you can go ahead and cut them off. So once again, we got the ruffle. That's what we want, right? We want that ruffle. So we got that ruffle. So that's what we want. That's what we're looking for is that ruffle right there. You know, you know I'll hook you up with a private lesson, Lee. So you know, anytime. You know how to get in touch with me, girl. You know how to. But that's the ruffle. So now we're going to make the ruffle on the other side, right? Once again, on your table or wherever you're working at, you go, you find, if you're using the mat, then you use the mat, go in your five inches. On this reef already, I know it's this white and red stripe right here. So when you using a mesh that has a design or stripe on it, use that to your advantage. Once you realize where the five inches is and you go to that design, you know that's where the five inches is. Not a big deal. So we tuck in this in over here. We know the five inches is where this white and red line is. So here we go. Make another ruffle on this end. Just make that ruffle. You just keep going down. Get to the end. There you go. There go your second row. Look at that. There go your second second one. So now we went to the top, came down to the bottom. We're gonna go back to the top, but where we're gonna go to the top is is on top of that last bottom one that we put. Okay? So right here at the top, where we put the bottom at is where we're gonna go with this first ruffle. So we take that, that Chanel stem, we open it up, we push this ruffle down in it, this end of the mesh down in it, get that other end, okay? We push it down, tuck your ends around, because, you know, mesh, sometimes you gotta, you gotta show it who's boss just a little bit. We push it down a little bit, and then we give it a good twist, make sure it's in there good, because you don't want nothing to come out. So now we got that other end, that other ruffle on that end, we're going to take the clip off, we're going to go to the bottom of the next one, so we're going to go down to this one, to the bottom of the next one, okay, we went from the, t I'm going to show you, we went from the top here on this one, to the bottom of that one, so we're at the top here, here, we're at the top, and now we're going down to the bottom on the following, following one, okay, so here we go, we got to open that up, Lay it down, and then give it a good twist. Cure it in there. So here we go. 
We got a ruffle. We got a poof. So we take the ends of the poof and we tuck it under. It's just like when we do the regular poof method ruffle. I think that was the bicycle reef that I showed you guys. Um, I used the poof method if I'm not mistaken. So just the same way. You pull it in. You tuck the ends under because that helps with the fraying. Like I said, mesh is going to fray. It's okay. But you just tuck it in and it helps with the fray. It helps with you seeing those, those rough edges, those frays. And you're going to have to go through and you're going to have to cut some of these frays off. It's fine. So now what you do when you have it. So you've got your ruffle on this and you did your poof. Now that last ruffle you did before, you want to bring that up. Pull this poof down. But you want to bring that last ruffle up. The one that was at the bottom. You check on this poof, the first poof you did, and you wanted that, that ruffle you put at the top. You want to bring that over and then pull down this poof. But you want the ruffle to be out where you can see that wavy type of look. That's what you want, right? Because you want the poof, but then you want that wave because it's called the ruffle poof reef. You don't want to just see the poof. You want to see the ruffle. So you want to make sure you pull up this wave, which is the ruffle. Make sure you pull it up so you can see it in between your poops, right? So you go over here, see it's just one right here, so you ain't got to worry about it. But when you start connecting them, you want to make sure in between your poops, you can see that nice wave, that nice ruffle. That's the look we're going for. And you see how full and pretty that's coming up? There's only two pieces up here, ladies and gentlemen. Two pieces. That's all it is. Let's go to the next one. And now what we're going to do, I'm going to show you since I don't have it in my hand, I don't have to hold anything. We're going to go from this top bar where we just put this one at the bottom. We're going to go to the top bar. We're going to put one here, the ruffle here. We're going to go across and then put it at the bottom on this end. So we're going top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. That's the style of this reef. Right? You don't go straight across. You go diagonally. That's how you make it nice and full. So let's go to the next one. Once again, we roll our mesh out the long way. We already know that this red, white, and blue, this red and white stripe is where the five inches is. This is about where five inches is. So we're just tucking that in, in a little bit to help with the fraying. We go over to this red, white, this red and white stripe here with this mesh, and we start walking our fingers up. There you go. Starting to make that ruffle. That's what we want. You may have to straighten it out a little bit. It's okay. That's what mesh does. Get to the end. You got your ruffle. You want to take your clip. Like I said, sometimes you have to pull it up into the clip. And there you go with your ruffle. That's what you want. We go over to the other end just want that end tucked in a little bit and we know the five inches is right where that red and white line is straighten it up a little bit and then we just want to walk it up on this end too this method is so easy and so quick and so affordable okay I have made reefs where I've put uh, 45 50 dollars into the reef just in material this reef is not that way. So what I like about it is that I can have reefs on my in my shop now that's maybe $40 because of the material, the, the lower count of material, the amount of money I had to put in to make this reef. So I'm really loving this style of reef because I can go from very affordable to the ones that's kind of, it's a little expensive. I mean, more material, it costs more money. I mean, that just would be anywhere, right? Okay, so like I said, we're going to go to the top of where that put that bottom one. But I just put this bottom ruffle. We're going to go to the very top of that one, into that Chanel stem. We're going to place this ruffle down. And we're going to push it down, and we're going to secure it tightly. One, two twists. You can put three. It's up to you. Whatever you feel like secure, it feels good to you, nice and tight, that's what you do. We take this in, take the clip off, we got that in that's ruffled, and we're going to go to the bottom of the very next little crossbar, okay? I'm going to open up that bottom Chanel stem and put 
the ruffle in it. Once we get the ruffle down in it, we push it down and we give it a good one, two, twist. Then what we do, what did I tell you last time we do? We got to pick up these ruffles, right? Because we got to see that wave, right? That's the whole thing. We got to see the wave. Got to see the wave. So, we're going to go on this end. We're going to pick up the this, gotta pick up that wave. Got to have that pretty wave in it. That's the whole point of this reef. It's called a ruffle hoof method. So, you want to see these ruffles. So, you go in here in the middle. You take these ends. And you just tuck it in. It's just like when you do the poof method. You tuck it in and you just pull it out so you can get that nice pretty poof. If you get these little strays that stick up, your best bet is just to push that down like that. Take scissors, give it a clip, one, two, and look, they're gone. You don't have to go under, be doing no clipping, which you will do at the end. You will clip some little ends at the end. It's not a big deal. Um, you'll see them and you'll clip them off, and but you can do that all at the end, right? You got your poof, got your poofs, and you got your ruffles. We went in here and we pulled the ruffles up. So look, look what you got. Look what you got. Look at that. Look at that. All right, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Once again, you want to do it the long way. want to tuck end up tuck under the end and that's just for fraying purposes if you don't want to do it ladies and gentlemen it's your reef you don't have to I'm just giving you a suggestion that's it this is all a suggestion I know that red and white stripe is where my five inches is now right so I'm just gonna walk my hands up that's all I'm gonna do and I'm gonna make this ruffle Sometimes the mesh wants to stick with each other. You just you stick on stick stick on each other. You just pull it out. You're not gonna hurt it. You, you don't want to pull it too hard because then you uh, you you can mess it up. So you just pull it out a little bit. You stick this up in your little clip. I have had a couple of times it has come out. So it does happen. It's okay. You just re bunch it up, put the clip back on it, it'll be alright. We go over to this end. And we do the same thing. We tuck, tuck under the ends. We know that red and white is where my five inch mark is. And we just walk our fingers up. That's all we do. Walk our fingers up. We take that in. That go our ruffle. And what do we do, ladies and gentlemen? What did we do last time? We went to the top of where we ended at, right? That's where we go. We find that last one. We look and we see the top. And that's where we're going to go. I'm going to put it at Chanel stem at the top of where we just put the last one at, right? Top of that crossbar. You push it down and then you give a good twist. You got to secure it. Right? Then we take the next end and what we do ladies we go to the bottom of the next crossbar remember top bottom top bottom we stick it down in there I love this method it's so simple so simple put it down in there I don't know who came up with it but I love it and I love the fact that all you need you can make two reefs with one roller mesh thank you Cause that let me tell you this this roll of mesh right here was $14.99 just for the mesh okay $15 just for this mesh so when people want to complain about prices of reefs this mesh was $15 alone so if you can stretch it it's a blessing so once again we got out the bottom here the top is up here we want to come up to this ruffle we want to pull it up, right? We want to see that ruffle. We want to see that ruffle in between that poof. So we go to the bottom here. We pull it up the, the bottom piece. We pull it up because we want to see that ruffle. You want to see that ruffle. That's what we want to see. That's the gold, right? We want to see these ruffles 
in between the poof that's the style that we want it looks gorgeous it looks gorgeous cutting up some little cutting off some of these little stray pieces here if you hear banging and stuff my husband is home so you're you're him making noise upstairs yeah he doing his thing up there as long as he leave me alone down here all right then we go to the poof part we got to tuck under those ends remember this is the poof method so you see these frayed ends we want to take it and we want to tuck it under we don't need to see those frayed ends we don't we don't need to see it so we just take these ends and we just make a poof that's it there you go you made your poof you got your poof and then you got your ruffles come on ladies and gentlemen can, can you get it can you get any easier really this is just great and like you like i said fray, mesh is going to fray so you're going to have these points where you got to go in and you got to cut some of these pieces and it's okay take your scissors and you cut them and there you go we're gonna move on because we only got two more to go then we start working on the bow that's how easy this reef is all right so we lay it out remember you lay it out the long way right lay it out the long way you come on ladies and gentlemen i see brenda and i see leanne anybody else out there let me know if you watch it let me know who you are let me know who you checking in from I like to know. Say hello. All right. Let's see. I want to get that that end tucked in. So you know when you're doing it, when you start it, I said tuck that end in because you want to minimize your fraying. So we already know that red and white line right here on this stripe mesh is my five inches. So we're just going to start walking our hands up. But if we didn't know, wasn't sure, we can use this mat. Go in five inches from the edge. And then start doing this method, right? And for all of you that just started, I am making a patriotic reef. This is a customer request. She's she asking me to make uh, two reefs for her because she has double doors, and she just wanted a mesh. Hey, Carla. Um, she just wanted a mesh reef with a bow. So I went out. I had a. She wanted a patriotic. So I had this red, white, and blue stripe mesh that I have right here, 21 inch. Let me see. Let me get this down in here. Sometimes it's a little tricky when it gets a little thick, and I don't know. Some sometimes when I ruffle it up, it seems thicker than the others. I don't know why. But anyway, 21 inch patriotic red, white, and blue mesh. I cut it into 12 30 inch pieces. So remember, 12 30 inch pieces, right? And I have it on a 12 inch wire reform. You're gonna need 12 zip ties. And I put the zip ties on each crossbar. So we got one to the top of the crossbar. Maybe you can see that really well. And one to the bottom crossbar. We did that all the way around. It was it was six of those little uh, spacers. So you need two on each. So that would make 12. So you got your 12 inch work form. You got your 12 pipe cleaners or Chanel stems. You put that up and bottom on those crossbars. You have your 21 inch mesh that you cut 12 pieces at 30 inches long. And then we're doing the ruffle poof method. Okay, so we did this last inch, this last section over here. Yes, please call it. Try this method. It is so, so simple. Anyway, watch, watch, watch. You got the ruffle method on this end, right? So we got to do the ruffle method on this end. We already know since we've been doing this video that this red and white stripe line is with that five because you want to go five inches from the outside, right? So you can get that nice ruffle. So what you do is you tuck under a little bit of that mesh because you want that this rough edge edge to be under. You don't really want it to be seen. And then you just ruffle straight up this red and white stripe line because that's where your five inches is. It don't have to be straight. You can be a little off. It can move a little bit. It's okay. It's okay. Not rocket science. It don't have to be accurate. We're not baking a cake. So you're okay. So you take this end. Right? So that one ruffle like we did before. And what did we do, ladies? We went to the top. Right on top of the bottom piece we just put in. Right? So we go to that top part. And we take this ruffle and we place it down in there. You get a hold of that Chanel stem. You make sure you got a good grip. You push that mesh down in there and then you give it a good one, two twist. 
like I said before, if you think three makes you feel better, you go three, four. It's up to you. So then you got the poof, and then you go to this end of the other ruffle. And what do you do, ladies and gentlemen? What did I say? You go from top to bottom, top to bottom. So we went to the top on this end, so we want to go to the bottom of the next one. That would be this one right here. So we put put that down there onto the bottom. Check with the Chanel stem here. Starting to get a little busy in there because we're getting to the end. And we got one more to put on. We push it down. And we give it a good one-two twist because we want to make sure it's in there good. Now what do we do? We got to see that wave, right? We got to see that ruffle. So we got to go back. Here go that ruffle. Bring it up. Bring it up so you can see the ruffle. Bring up this end, that ruffle. That one that you put down there. Then you got to go in the center and do your poof. You know your poof method. You want to tuck in those ends. You don't want to see all the fraying and stick out ends. So we go here to the poof and we take those ends and we tuck them in. And we poof up. That middle part, because that's what this style is. It's called the poof ruffle method. So you got to have your poof, you know, got to look pretty. Now look at that. You got your poof, you got your ruffle. You got your poof, you got your ruffle. That's what this style is about. Gorgeous. I love this method. I will be using it over and over again now. Now we on our last one. Our last one. We want to just tuck under this end. I don't know what my husband is doing upstairs, but it sounds like he's like banging on the floor. And that's husband's for you. So I tucked under this end. I know this red and white stripe is my five inch. So here we go. Let's ruffle it up. And you don't have to have anything to hold your mesh down. I just do it. It just makes the mesh lay easier for me. But if you're the type of person where it doesn't bother you, it's all over the place, and then you don't even have to worry about that part. I just do it trying to show you that, you know, hey, if you got to put something on it, then you put something on it. This is not holding tight. Like I said, sometimes when you ruffle, it goes in easy, and then sometimes you got to kind of work with it. I don't know just weird to me but hey it is what it is all right so we want to go to the other end you know we got to tuck it under so we get it tucked under we know that five inches is where this red and white stripe is we got it tucked under and we just going to make that ruffle now ladies and gentlemen let's say you wanted to make i don't know a fall reef you can get a beautiful rust color reef do a background of rust color throw in some fall sunflowers some beautiful mums in the nice fall colors oh my god and a nice little sign or a little uh, 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 farmhouse pickup truck come on come on that's a reef for you come on let's get those creative minds going you know this oh perfect so now once again we want to go to the top of what we just left off at right from that bottom ruffle we want to put this on the top so we have to move the mesh out the way because now we got we we at the last one so we got to fight for a little bit of space so take your time get to that chanel stem push it down give it that one two good twist then we go over to the other end gotta separate the mesh we file, trying to find that bottom Chanel stem, which is right there. Push it down. Right now, you're fighting for space. That's all that is. Because this is only six pieces. But it's full. It's full. I mean, when I, when I learned this, I was like, yes, 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 yes. So now, we give it a good one-two twist. We got it down in there. Now we gotta fluff it up. So you take this ruffle, this end, now I got some little fray pieces, and you're gonna have that. No matter what mesh you use, you're gonna have these fray pieces, and it's fine. You just take your scissors, take your time, clip them out, it'll be fine. 
and that's what I'm doing you just take your time you see me I'm taking my time I'm looking at what I'm doing and you just cut them out you're not going to have a lot of them but you will have them because you're tucked under those ends so you really don't see them but the, some of the rough ends on your on your on your ruffles you'll see some of them and some of them from underneath may stick out but that'll be fine so we took the ruffle and we want to bring it in between the poofs so this ruffle we just did we're going to bring this we're going to take this ruffle we're going to bring it in between so you got that that wave that that ruffle so then we want to take this poof that we just put in stick under those ends and you have to let it know who's boss a little bit you know don't tug on it too hard but you have to let it know uh -uh, wait a minute now i need you to do what you need to do so there you go look i mean this is just it's gorgeous it's flipping gorgeous and it's nothing on it this is just mesh i am so used to doing reefs with so much stuff on it that when I did this reef last night, I was totally surprised at how beautiful I thought it was, being that it, this is just going to have mesh and ribbon on it and a bow. That's it. No embellishments. But of course, if you want to embellish it, that's all up to you. You can put as much stuff up as you like. I have behind that curtain, I got so much patriotic stars and rockets and everything. Look at this. Once again, this is just six piece, pieces of 21 inch mesh cut at 30 inches. You, you can't see the work form. It was absolutely amazing to me. Totally full, beautiful design. You got your waves, you got your poofs, nice and full. This is just a gorgeous way and a very easy way and a very economical way to do reefs very I found it I gotta share it I'll be doing it some more now let's put the let's let's do the bow because what my client wanted was she wanted she wanted a bow I asked her did she want to know she just wanted me a uh, mesh in a bow so I said okay that's what my client wanted that's what she gets that's what she wants that's what she gets so I'm just going around and just looking to make sure some little pieces and you're gonna do this again so I'm just looking twisting it around seeing if there's anything I need to cut right now because <clears throat> when you make reefs you'll get used to knowing that you know you always got to cut something and correct something and you know make it look pretty so so far that's what we have nice and full all the way around nice and round um, there's really no flat really areas it's just it's all even it's all it's all beautiful it's all beautiful so let's make a bow my client didn't want nothing too much I, I showed you guys earlier what I made yesterday for her um, she just wanted the patriotic color on deco mesh and she just wanted a simple bow this is the bow that I'm going to do it's just the five starts on five inches goes into four inches and then this middle part is three inches um, I just threw in this red and white uh, stripe ribbon just to make this red ribbon pop even even more. You don't have to do this. You can even put this lower course if you just do a bow. Just one one ribbon bow. I did two, but they're not very big, so it's not a lot of inches. So it didn't cost a lot of money to make this bow. It didn't add a lot of money to this reef trust me this reef was very economical so we're going to do another bow like that so it matches but it's just a different color right because like i said she has matching doors so we got to make sure that what she get is going to look decent on her door so that red white with um blue and red uh stripe doesn't have any tails i didn't want any tails the main color on the bow is the blue or either the red so when I make my bow, it's kind of hard to see because I don't have an overhead camera. For you guys have seen me making my bow. I don't do much of a tail here. I maybe have two, maybe three inches. I pinch it. And I stick it right down into my easy bow. I wish I had an overhead camera. I don't have that yet. You guys help me out. You share, you follow, you subscribe, you like. My channel will get bigger and maybe I can afford to get that overhead camera. So far, I ain't there yet. 
like I said in the beginning, this is me showing you turning my hobby into a business. Baby steps for me. So we got the ribbon. Now the ribbon is the, the bad side. It's facing up because I twisted it. So once you stick it down in there, you give it a twist. So now you got that, that bad side or the inside of the ribbon facing up to you. So then you take it and you pull some of the ribbon out. Let me move this so you can see what I'm doing. And on this easy bar, it has inches. That's why I love it. You go to the five inch mark, you push it down, go to the five inch mark, and you don't need to flatten it to go to the five inch mark. Leave it with some sort of roundness. Leave it with some sort of roundness. Like this is not flat. You see it's got it's got roundness. It's open. You go to that five inch mark, you know you're there. You need to add a little more to go there, and then you pinch this down, and then you give it a twist. You go down to the five inch mark on this side. Same thing. You make sure it has a poof to it. Because that's the reason why you don't want it flat is because it's not it's not going to give you the right size. When it's when it's flat, when you poof it up, it's going to come in more. So you want to make sure you have some sort of roundness to your uh, bow, your ribbon, because then you know when it's poofed up, it's still going to be it's going to be at that five inches. It's still going to look good at that five inches when you have it that way. And if when you poof it up, it don't look like just add a little bit more to it. It's it's not rocket science. It's okay. It's okay. So you twist it. So now you got that bad side facing you again. You come down into the middle. You look for that five inch mark again. You make sure you have this this open. And you push it down. Now one of the ways I was taught to try to see if your bows are even on both sides, and you want to know what to this day, I never make a bow that's perfect on both sides. I, I, I don't know. And this has inches on it. I still, I, I'm still off. But you can't tell. It's okay. But one of the ways that they show you is you bring one of the bows up, you bring the other bow up, and they should match. Right? They should match. You know the bow's about the same size. And then some people eyeball it. It's up to you. So this is just one bow, right? We're going to do two. But we're going to cut this off. You don't have to, but I do. And you just go in maybe an inch. Because you need a little space. You need a little space. Because we're going to tighten it up and all that type of stuff. Oh, one, one step I forgot to show, tell you guys. Take a zip tie, and this is just me. Um, you can use a Chanel stem. I like a zip tie. A lot of people make their bows in their hands, and they get the, zip, the Chanel stem, twist it under, pull it, and they tighten it up that way. My bows tend to move. I haven't gotten that down yet, so I like to have a little bit more control. So I take a uh, zip tie, and I put it on my easy bow, and I put it under the bow right so it's under the bow because what happens is I'm going to close this once the bow is finished and this is what I'm going to use to tighten it as well as I'm putting a Chanel stem Chanel stem right I'm gonna put that in between the two rails like I put the ribbon and it's going to be on top of that so this is how you want to you want to see it underneath. You want to see the zip tie and that and the pipe clean or Chanel temp stem on top of it. Because once you close the Chanel the zip tie, it hold everything together. You have the Chanel stem sticking at the bottom, and you can attach it right to your reform. Okay. So I forgot to show y'all that part. So here we go. We got this bow. So now we want to do a blue bow. Got a little out of hand, so let's fix this back up. We want to do this blue bow the same size, but we want to do two bows on each side. We only did one bow of the white with the red and blue stripes. So we want to do two bows on each side of the blue. But we want at least 16 inch tails, at least 16 inch tails of this beautiful blue. So we go out about 16 inches. It don't have to be exact. 
And you don't have to do this if you don't want to. If you just want a bow with no tails, then you just make it that way. I wanted the the red to hang and I want the blue to hang because that's the dominant colors that she wanted. So I'm making dramatic tails. You do not have to have your tails like this. I'm just making mine this way. So I'm doing 16 inch tails. And when I do that, I stick it down there and then I give it a twist. Remember, do that twist because you want that bad side of the ribbon to be shown, to show up. So then you want you want your bow the same size. So you just make it the same size as the first one. That's all. You ain't even gotta go look at no measurements. You use the bow that was already there. That's already there. That's the that's what you use. You use that bow as your measurer. Give it a twist. Do the same thing on the other side. And this type of ribbon you gotta gotta work with a little bit because it's thin. So you gotta work with it a little bit. So you know that's the good. You give it another twist because you want that bad side to show. And you want, like I said, you want. And that is a little big. So we're going to pull it down some. Okay. So you, we put these two up here because I want two at the top. I give this a twist. And then I want one at the bottom on each side right so like I said this is ribbon that you have to work with so that's the bad side and we want to flip it onto the good side but you have to thin ribbon so you have to kind of pull it out because it's, it'll get folded on you so we got this here so we got one at the top one at the bottom we want to twist this in because we want the bad side to be up and then we want to do the same on this side we want to do a bow at the bottom now, like I said, you don't have to make your bow like this. You can do any style you want to um, of bow. You, you don't have to make your bow this way. I just wanted to, she, she wanted a blue bow and she wanted a red bow. So I wanted to make sure she had a dominant blue bow and a dominant red bow. And then you take this in and you match this tail on this side. So you just take your scissors and you match it. Well, I have to use this again. Don't throw that away. You're going to come back in with this white ribbon with the red and blue stripes, right? Once again, we don't want tails on this one. Just making sure because this thin ribbon gets twisted. I want to make sure we got that. And I just separate them. You don't have to separate them like you see me separate the bows like this. One up, one, one bottom. But that's my vision of this bow. So I kind of put it how I want to see it. You don't have to do it that way, but I do. Because I kind of like, oh, okay, that looks good. That's how I want it. It looks good that way. So, once again, I go in maybe three inches, stick it down, give it a twist. Now, we just want this one, like the first bow was five inches. I want to go down to maybe to about four inches, right at four inches. So we're going to take this, and you can use the measurements on this easy bow, and I, I suggest you do. You move the bow out the way, the bow at the bottom out the way, and I've had an overhead camera, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But there's uh, measurements, like I said in the beginning. So we did the first bow at five inches, we're going to go down to this, the, the four inches, and we just... We move the bow over a little bit where we can see where the four inch mark is. We do a little poof and you just stick it down. That's at the four inch mark and then you want to give it a twist. Remember, give it that twist because you got to have that bad side facing up. And then you want to do the same thing on the other side. This is a four inch. So you want to do the same thing on the other side. You want to move that bottom bow out the way. Give it a little poof. Know that that's four inches. And then you don't have to flip this over because we're going to cut this off. Right? We're going to make sure we can look down at our bow. Eyeball it. It looks kind of good to me. Is that that four inch mark? And we're going to give it a little snip, maybe an inch. 
we don't need this no more. I'm, I'm about out anyway. I got to order some more. So we want to go back in with that blue. We're going to finish up with the blue because once again, the blue is supposed to be the dominant color, right? So we're going to go back in with this blue. I'm going to go back in with the blue. So what do you guys think so far? I mean, I love that method. I know Carla says she loves, she's looking at this method and she said it looks good. She's going to try it. What about anybody else? What you think? What you think about that method? I mean, when I, when I found that method, I was in love. In love. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to go another, another 16 inches. We're going to give it a twist, right? Because we need that bad side to be up. And what we do is we're going to go to that, but once again, we're going to match this second bow size, which is four inches. <clears throat> so we twisted it. So we come down. And we got the four inches over here. We give it a twist. We do the four inches on this side. The sheer ribbon. So you just gotta be mindful of the sheer ribbon. So you gotta be just a little bit, a little, little bit careful with it. We twist it again because we need that bad side up again. Sometimes they want to cooperate, sometimes they don't. We want to make four, two on each side, right? So we got these matching, this side matching. We want to twist it in the middle again. We want to bring it over. And then we want to match the bows on this side. Once we match the bows on the opposite side, right? We want to make a small bow for the center just to have a little something in the center. So we don't twist, we twist it here in the middle once we bring that bow back, right? We twist it, we have the bad side up and we, we go over maybe, make like a two inch bow. Maybe three inches, whatever you think you need. It's like a little baby bow in the middle. See that little baby bow? I know it's kind of hard to tell when it's on top of each other. But it's a little baby bow. I don't know if I can bring that closer so you guys can see. It's a little baby bow. I got my two fingers sticking in. That's all you need. Just that little baby bow. And we're going to cut it off at that point. We're going to come out, come about maybe an inch on this side and give it a cut. And we're done. Now we're going to put it together. We're going to put it together now. So, I told you about that zit tie and that Chanel stem at the bottom. Let me show you how that works. Try to put it where you can see it. Here's the, the zip tie right here at the bottom. And remember, you got the Chanel stem going across on top of, on the inside of the zip tie, right? So when you close the zip tie, the Chanel stem and the ribbon is going to be in the inside of the zip tie. And the zip tie is going to hold everything together. So you want to pick the bottom part of that zip tie up, both ends. You want to stick it in to the, the one and into the other. We want to start cinching it up. You hear it clicking, right? Start cinching it up. We don't want to tighten it all the way, not just yet. So we cinch it up when it's got a good hold on it. See, it's got that good hold on it. It's not going nowhere. You pick it up, you get rid of this. So now we got the bow, but the zip tie is over to the left or the right, depending on how you're looking at the screen. I think when you guys see it, it'll be over to the right. So you gotta bring it more to the middle. So then you just hold your material, move the zip tie over. That's all you gotta do, like just move it over to the middle. It don't take much. You pull a zip tie to the back and then you start cinching it down. Don't cinch it all the way yet either. You wanna take your time. You see what I'm doing? Fluffing up my bow. See what I'm doing? Just fluffing up that bow. Fluffing up that bow, that's all I'm doing. You wanna make sure your bow is laying right. Sometimes when you cinch it up too soon, it gets too tight and you don't have no play, no movement in your bow, and you really can't fix it. When you, when you wait, see what I'm doing here? Now I need a little bit more space more in there and I was able to pull it out just a little bit. That's all I needed. So now we got this beautiful blue bow that's going to go on top of the street. And I wanted three strands. 
these little long strands that's going to hang down on the reef. Let's look at that. Beautiful bow. So now that we have it, we're happy with it, we're satisfied with it, now we can cinch it down. Now we can go to the back. We can take the zip tie, we can really give it a good tug. Good tug. Make sure it's nice and tight, and then we just cut off the end. Make sure you're just cutting off the zip tie. You're not just cutting off the shelf snail stem. The reason how I know that is because I've cut off the Chanel stem, ladies and gentlemen. Woo -hoo. So you don't want to do that because then you have to do the whole thing over and cinch it down and tie it back down. You want to do that. So then these tails that you added just for safety purposes, you can go down and you can cut these tails off. So you go around your bow and you cut these tails all the way down as far as you can get it. Make sure you don't have no other ribbon or material uh, around to cut. So you're going to go on the other side, get the tail on the other side, get the tail on that side. And some people don't do this. It don't bother them. I like to do it. It bothers me. I, I don't want the tail out there. So. But when you make the bow, you're not going to really see it too much. But I know it's there, so I want to cut it off. Make sure you don't have no other material in the way. Like we got this little blue tail. I'm going to cut that off. We don't need it, so cut it off. We didn't already tighten it down. We're not doing nothing else with the bow, but attaching it to the reef at this point, we're good to go. So now, our bow is ready to go. it up a little bit. I am absolutely loving that. Look at that. Absolutely loving it. Absolutely. All right. Let's get our reef here. And I can throw all my stuff on my floor, ladies and gentlemen, because I just sweep it up. It's just great. I love having the opportunity to just throw it on the floor, and then I sweep it up later. So we want to look at our reef, we want to see is there empty, like a light area, an area that don't look a little off or looks like it needs to be covered. And you want to know what, with this method, there is none. There is no wonky spot or light spot or a spot that looks like it needs to be covered over. What do you think? You guys see any spot here where you think I need to cover something or... You know, I need to put the bow there because it doesn't look right or it's not even. I don't see it. I, I don't see any spot like that. So, hey, we just want to look at it and be like, oh, okay, well, you know what? We're going to just put a bow right here. We're going to find a spot. We're going to put it right here. So, you just find a spot. Take your Chanel stem. Go through the mesh. Take one in. You get the other end, go through the mesh, and it's not hard to go through at all. You just find a spot, go through it, and you just give it a good twist. You don't want to, you don't want to twist it too tight. You don't want to push the bow down into the mesh, right? You want it to sit on top. Now look at that. <laughs> that is so pretty. That is so pretty. That is patriotic all the way. I'm so glad my customer asked me to make this for them. I mean, I, I would have, I would have never thought of just doing a blue bow and a red bow. I would have definitely mixed it up. But I'm, I'm really glad that she asked me to do it this way, because now it's opened my eyes. Now you see how that blue just hangs there, so it brings out the blue bow. The white with the red, it just makes it pop. And then you look at that blue and it just brings it out. Now this red is the same thing. But the red, what I've done, and the same thing I'm going to do to the blue, the red, what I've done is I've actually curled the ends. So these are going to hang like that. And the blue one is going to do the same. And I wanted it to hang with the curl. So that this is how the red one looks, right? This is how the red one looks. Let 
This is how it looks. What do you think? How do you think you do, do you like the red one too, too as well? But this is how it's gonna it's gonna be curled at the end. The blue one is gonna be the same way. Let me know if you like that. But when you put these two together, I still got something else to do with the blue. I'm not finished yet. But this is how they're gonna look on her door. What do y'all think? Y'all think that's gonna be a nice combination? I think it's gonna look great. I think it's gonna be absolutely beautiful. She's gonna have a double door. She's gonna have the reef that's got a blue ribbon and a reef that's got the red ribbon. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. I don't know, how did I come downstairs without my battery? Okay, just wanna wrap this up. This is done. The only thing I have to do now is cover the back with felt which y'all have seen me do before. I cut out a piece of felt to go around the back. I cover the back of my felt, that's all I do. And then I cut off these little red Chanel stems. So the Chanel stems you got sticking out, you twist them, you cut them off, you stick them under, and this is done. So I'm gonna wrap it up with you guys. I'm glad y'all stopped in. Once again, if you're watching on Facebook, like, share, follow, definitely comment. Let me know who you are, where you're checking it from, if you're watching it. On YouTube, please subscribe, share, and comment as well. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see me make next. I'm going to come on either tomorrow or later. I'm off for a couple of days, so I'll be able to go through my little uh, stash here and get some more stuff to do for you guys. So thanks again for checking in with me. And this is Katrina from Katheme Creations. Say, stay safe. Bye.